Hello gardeners, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist on this channel. We take that science and we apply it to all things gardening and plant care. So if you like the sounds of that, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and say hello to Ella for another video. Yeah, you were, you were the star of the show last time. If you guys don't already know, Mars Hydro has sponsored me and sent me an entire grow tent plus their TS-1000 light. And I'm on about week three of growing a, what I like to call taco garden in the grow tent. So I'm growing a combination of chives, basil, cilantro, peppers, and cherry tomatoes in my grow tent and I literally just want to keep filling it up. I'm even growing catnip in my grow tent because why not? But in today's video, I'm going to show you guys exactly what too much light looks like. I'd love to say I did this on purpose, but I didn't. This is one of my first times growing with an LED light. I am a T5 person and have been pretty much my entire life and the, the cat and the bird are currently at war with each other you can't he can't get you no he can't get you you're fine I uh, put my light a little bit too close to the plants uh, Mars Hydro has recommendations on exactly what height to put your plants or your light at and uh, being a redhead and stubborn I just decided not to follow those rules so um, I have some signs and symptoms of what too much light looks like so I'm going to show you guys exactly what it looks like when your grow light is too close to your plants but first let's seriously check out an update on this light I am blown away one of their sayings or their hashtags that mars hydro likes to use is sun like spectrum and i thought yeah okay sun like spectrum oh. thank you for the kiss okay yeah fine sunlight spectrum but i thought it was just a saying like i didn't actually think that they had such good of a light I'm gonna show you guys two pepper plants and i'm gonna give you some close-up shots but i'm just gonna put them up in front of my face one of these was grown under the Mars Hydro TS-1000 for the last three weeks, and the other was grown outside. Both were germinated at the exact same time. Both were repotted at the exact same time. And it's, I'll, I'll just show you. I'll just show you guys this. If you wanna grab this light, I have a link in the description for US, UK, Canada, yeah, Australia. If you guys want to grab this light there are links in the description that you can grab these lights from but like <laughs> I'm not kidding you so this was the one that's grown outside this is the one that was grown in the grow tent and there's some signs of sun damage or light damage on this and I'll I'll get into that later but one thing to note that sets this plant apart from this plant is the fact that a there's a lot more foliage but b the bushing on this plant without pruning mind you i have not pruned my pepper plants is insane compared to this one so this one hasn't really bushed at all um, it has some secondary stems but they're pretty spindly pretty weak not very full this one has secondary stems that are huge so this is a secondary stem, this is a secondary stem, and they just go the whole way up. And the crazy part about the secondary stems is that each one of the secondary stems has flowers on them, meaning potential pepper babies are coming my way. So just on this top head here, I have one, two, three, four flower crust clusters just right here and then as I move down every single branch has <laughs> you I'm not joking you has two sets of flower clusters per node so this branch for example has two main nodes at the end and each one of these main nodes has flower clusters on it so there's the two flower clusters that are up here at the forefront and then there's two flower clusters farther back and that is for every single one 
I'll just show you the outside one again. I'll just real quick. I'll just show it to you real quick. That it just is that not shocking to you guys? That is shocking to me. For a horticultural science perspective, like that is wild. And honestly, I think a huge factor in this is for Canadians, especially our nights get very cold. So our nights really aren't staying above 15 degrees Celsius. I'll put what that means in Fahrenheit somewhere over here, but it's not, it's not staying above 15 degrees Celsius. And in the tent, it's minimum room temperature. Now this LED light, I have said before, doesn't throw off a lot of heat, but it's just not dipping below a certain level. Um, it has, yeah, I'm, I'm personally really blown away, but I digress. Let's get into exactly what LED or grow light damage looks like on your plant. Now, this is going to apply to both indoor plants and outdoor plants. So let's get into it. So first up, let's start off with the saddest looking plant. <laughs> yeah, that happened. So this was an Echeveria. And as you can see, it's uh, not so lively anymore because I burnt it. And this is not the fault of the light. This is the fault of me. I wanted to see how intense this light actually was. So I took an Echeveria that was an indoor plant that was on a counter, not outdoors, not exposed to any sunlight at all. And I just decided to throw it right into the heat of the, the moment in the grow tent. And my results, oh. Just look at that. It's, it's beautiful, isn't it? Really, it, it's truly beautiful. Um, so yeah, I fried this. So this is the first sign of sun damage. It'll look like that, but that's pretty severe. Second sign of sun damage or intense sun that needs to be adjusted, right Ella? Is the curling or the cupping of the leaves. And the reason why these leaves will do that is because they're trying to reduce the amount of sun that hits that epidermis of the plant cells or cell wall um, in hopes of preserving some of the photosynthetic cells, which we've gone over before. I'll pop up a photo of exactly what I'm talking about, but it's that epidermal layer. They're trying to preserve the vacuole which is the water organ inside of the actual cell leaf but then also the cells that help with photosynthesis so the best way to preserve this is actually by cupping the leaf and if you cup the leaf then you can cast a shadow and therefore you can potentially preserve some of the membrane. So that is what this pepper plant did. And I did it in a few places, but he's starting to adjust to the new um, LED lighting and how bright it is. But I'll show you what these leaves look like. So this right here is a cupping. This guy, this guy, these are all cuppings. So this is all a sign of really intense sunlight. And the reason I know that too is not only the cupping, but also the fact that I have this kind of like burnt brown look on the edges of this. So that is a sign to me that he has been hit with too much sun and it is time to adjust the height of my LED lights, which is exactly what I did for this guy. Now, the other signs are a little bit odder looking and I will show you exactly what that looks like. So this is one of my basil varieties that I've decided to grow and it is really densely seeded in here. Oh, that smells so good. Um, so the reason why I, jeez, just your reflection. So the reason why I packed this in here so tight is because I actually wanted to see how low this light could penetrate and kind of at what point I was getting a leggy seedling. So um, I wanted to see how far through the canopy it would penetrate. And the reason for that and the reason why I decided to perform that experiment is because I actually want to look into potentially putting a racking system in here, um, especially for indoor plants. And then I can actually put my highest plant, like my plants that need the most sunlight at the top, move my LED light up because remember it's on that cabling system and then kind of put my lower lights at the bottom. If I have to do any sort of rehab with my plants, I think that's a really good option to try. And 
it looks like it can penetrate pretty deeply into the canopy and I'll show you why I think that. So surface wise lighting, signs of too much LED lighting are kind of, can you, sorry, I don't mean to keep on looking at my, I don't want to keep on looking like I'm admiring myself, but <laughs> when I show plant tutorials and I'm actually showing the plant and not B-roll, I find it really difficult to be like, yeah, so this right here, so I have to look at the plant. I'm not ignoring you, I promise, but I know how obnoxious that is because I watch YouTubers all the time. I'm like, look at the view, or don't look at the viewfinder, look at me, jeez. But I just want to see if it shows up. So it kind of is sort of, so oh, it's showing up right here really well. So this kind of marbling, see how it's kind of like really high, high, high greens, and then it's like dark greens. And it kind of almost looks like a Dalmatian or like bleach spots, almost like fertilizer burn. That is not fertilizer burn. That is too intense of a light, too close to my plants. So yeah, it literally looks like I spilt bleach on my plant. Yeah, that is really good. It literally looks like I spilt bleach on my plant and I didn't, <laughs> but that's what it looks like. So that is another sign that I've applied too much sunlight to my plants. Now, there's no telling how your plant's gonna react to too much LED light that's too close to it, um, but these are really good indicators. Obviously, the dead plant is a really great indicator of a problem, but the cuppings of the leaves usually will happen with a uh, denser or a thicker leaf, something that's tougher like the pepper plant, but something like basil, lettuce, herbs are going to get more of that bleached look more so than the curling look. So that's kind of what's going on here. And my catnip's doing the same thing. So this is my catnip I'm growing in my Mars Hydro tent. This thing is only three, five, three feet by three feet, but you'd be surprised what can fit in this thing. So again, my catnip's not as bad because they do, it does like full sun um, and it does. So let's get science here for a second. Catnip has a fluff on the outside. It has hairs basically like a fuzz and that fuzz is always known on any plant to protect it from sun. It helps refract the rays from hitting the plant too hard. So if you have a fuzzy plant, generally for the most part fuzzy plants are full sun plants because they've been designed to take on the sunshine. So catnip is a fuzzy plant. Um, I wish I could show you fuzziness on the camera. I'll try. But that's why this one doesn't look as severely burnt and it's literally because of the fuzz, because of the hairs. It's a wonderful little organ that plants have. So, as you can see, I've got some, some bleaching, like this one. Ooh, that one's pretty bleached, but it is fuzzy. I doubt you're gonna be able to see, yeah. Now I'm gonna try, but if you've ever grown catnip, it is very fuzzy. It's a fuzzy, fuzzy plant. So. That is what has protected this guy from too, too much burn, but you can see, oh yeah, you can see when I pull it back, how I have like the bleaching. So again, a sign of too much sunlight, but because he's fuzzy, he's gonna show me signs later on in life than something like the basil, which doesn't have the fuzzy stem. So for this guy, these are my chives, and these I actually got from PV Mart as a whole thing, like a whole plant. Um, and so yeah, a sign that your chives are getting too much sunlight um, and too intense of a sunlight is when they turn this bluish color. Do you kind of, is blue the right? Bluish green, I wanna say bluish green because that's like the color I'm seeing. But if it's not this green that's down here, that's the color that chives are supposed to be. But if it's this bluish kind of color, that means it's receiving really intense sunlight. This isn't a bad thing. The, the chives will grow just fine, but it is a sign that it is a little bit too intense. And then the other sign is again, the yellowing. So you get these yellow tips here and that's a sign of, these two are just going at it tonight. But yeah, so that's just another sign of too much sun is just kind of these spindly yellow tips. So what I did to alleviate this is I just lifted my light up about a foot or two and bam, I have uh, fixed my problem. But despite lifting my light, I'm still getting really good 
canopy penetration. So let me show you what that looks like. The surface of the plant is great, but if I separate this like the Sea of Moses, you will see smaller baby plants even growing and germinating still inside of this, despite how densely packed both the catnip and the basil are. So I'm just gonna open this up and I'll show you what I mean. So you see, <laughs> oh God, I'm not good at this. I'm so sorry, you guys. But you see how I've got all those little babies? That is how good the canopy penetration is. And that also explains why I have this scenario here. All my leaves, no matter how old or how young they are, are getting a full blast of sun. I'm officially going to have fresh veggies for the entire winter. Officially, as a Canadian, I'm gonna be growing peppers, tomatoes, and herbs all summer long. And yeah, this light is unbelievable. I don't know guys, you gotta get one. That's bottom line. I I never would have thought I'd be the person being like, yeah, so go buy this light, go buy this. I never, I'm not that person. I'm not one to promote like certain things or whatever. And even Mars Hydro, like the company itself is pretty awesome. So when I, when they approached me to ask if I would do kind of R&D, for lack of a better term, of their lighting system, one of the things that they mentioned in the contract was you can say whatever you want, just try the light and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't, but make sure you tell your audience exactly what you're getting. And so I thought, well, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be like, yeah, it's okay, it's all right, it's, it's fine, it works. But now this, this thing freaking works. I don't know, I'm, I'm personally blown away like this. This is sad, and this is a typical Canadian zone three growing of a pepper plant. This is not with a succulent tag, but this is just, yeah, like this is just my classic plant. This is how pepper plants grow in Canada. I can show you a bunch outside, check it out on Instagram. I did a post on there where I show all my sad looking pepper plants compared to my Mars Hydro. And yeah, this is just classic pepper plants in Canada. This is how it usually works out for us. Um, but things have officially changed for me. So yeah, from a science perspective, this light is uh, performing pretty much miracles. So what I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna see what I can do with this very sad looking pepper plant. And I'm gonna pop him inside this hydro tent and I'm gonna see if I can rehab an existing plant into something great and wonderful and see if it's not too late. So that is going to be the next step in this experiment. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope I'm somehow convincing you to get into indoor gardening and container gardening indoors for this winter fall season. If I did, be sure to let me know in the comments below um tell me if you're impressed with this let me know if you've tried led lights if you've noticed these kinds of results i don't know this light is actually insane Ugh. maybe i'm ignorant maybe this is just me not having experience with led lights and i'm such a noob and i don't know anything but uh it can't do what the sun can let's just put it that way it's like mother nature on steroids up in this tent so I'm going to let you guys go. Have a fun time gardening. Have an awesome gardening season. I hope my parrot and my cat didn't ruin your day. It is relatively late at night and uh, I was nerding out pretty hard at the end of the day starting to water, prune, and take care of my plants and then I noticed, oh my goodness, what's going on here? I have to do a video real quick so I stopped, dropped, and rolled. That's why I look so wonderful right now and I uh, decided, no, I gotta, I gotta do this video. So. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.